Thursday, November 12th, and this is your coffee break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, bringing you today's news, including an investigation in nearby Westchester County, New York, into the murder of a prominent socialite. Rob Adams will have the latest weather and high school sports. Donald Eng will take a look back in history. And since it's Thursday, we are going to take a look at the front pages of our community newspapers out today. But first, on to today's news. Rail officials have confirmed that a 38-year-old Milford man was struck and killed Wednesday morning by an Amtrak train. His death marked the sixth time a pedestrian has been killed by a train this year in southern Connecticut. Most of those deaths have been determined to be suicides. The Milford, the Milford man's name was being withheld pending notification of his family. That, according to Metro North spokesman Aaron Donovan. According to the Connecticut Post, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority police said there does not appear to be any criminal activity involved. Aaron Donovan confirmed that the man was hit at Stratford's Main Street train station by an Amtrak train out of Washington, D.C. and headed to Boston. The accident happened around 827 yesterday morning. At the time of the incident, 153 passengers were on the train. Uh, according to Amtrak spokesman Kimberly Woods, there are no reported injuries to passengers or crew members. The train came into contact with a trespasser. Stratford police officers on the scene said the man was seen on the tracks just before the train passed through the station. Amtrak trains do not stop in Stratford. After hitting the man, the Amtrak train was held at the station for more than two hours, with Northeast Regional Service resuming through Stratford just before 11 a.m. yesterday. Well, the New York State Police are investigating the death of an 83-year-old North Salem woman as a homicide. Police say that 83-year-old Lois Colley died Monday of blunt force trauma to the head. Kali is the wife of wealthy McDonald's franchise owner Eugene Kali. Kali was last heard from at 3 p.m. and her body was later found around 5 in the evening that same day. Police said a caretaker found Kali's body on the laundry room floor of her home. Police also said there weren't any signs of forced entry and that the only object missing from Kali's residence was a fire extinguisher. Lieutenant Paul DeQuatro of the State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigation said that police are in the early stages of the investigation. He said, we are using New York State and local resources in this investigation. At this time, the police have not arrested anyone related to the alleged homicide. While the police have not revealed whether or not they have any suspects, DeQuatro said the caretaker that discovered Kali's body is not considered a suspect at this time. DeQuatro asked the public to report any suspicious activity to the police. Anyone with information regarding Kali's death can contact investigators there at 914-277-3177. And for updates on that story, you can check our HAN Network Westchester County newspaper, lewisboroughledger.com. Well, Trumbull must pay its former school facilities manager, AFB Construction, $20,000, which is a settlement recently reached in a lawsuit that was filed in 2013. Trumbull resident and AFB construction owner Al Barbarata sued First Selectman Tim Herbst for interfering in a business deal between AFB and the Trumbull Loves Children Preschool. After Superior Court Judge Michael Camp denied Herp's lawyer's motion for summary judgment on June 16th and pushed the case toward a trial, the parties negotiated outside of court and reached an agreement on October 27th that the town's insurance carrier would pay Barbarata. The Fairfield District Superior Court judge added that Herbst, quote, chose to interject himself into whom TLC would choose as its representative, and he did not give advice. He ordered TLC to find a different contractor. The judge went on to say his justifications for his actions are not sufficient for the court to grant judgment as a matter of law. Barbarata's lawyer, Ed Schofield, spoke with the Trumbull Times Monday and explained that the judge's denial led to the party's decision to settle. Schofield said the judge didn't rule in favor of anyone. What he said was that a jury should decide that the evidence presented by Herp's lawyers was not sufficient to throw out his client's claims. Herbst, who ordered a 2014 investigation into the school building permits and projects handled by AFB, said Monday afternoon he was glad that the settlement came at no cost to the taxpayers. 
Perp said, I think it says a lot that Mr. Barbarata probably spent over $200,000 of his own money to settle a claim for $20,000 paid by an insurance carrier. Herps went on to say, I think it speaks to how his claim had absolutely zero merit and was politically motivated. The two have publicly attacked one another in the press during the Herps administration's investigation into AFB and AFB's lawsuit. Both have claimed the other's actions are politically motivated. Herps has been named a potential Republican candidate for governor in the future, and Barbarata is a friend of Governor Daniel Malloy's. The Trumbull School Board, which is chaired by Herp's mother, Deborah Herbst, voted in 2014 not to renew AFB's contract with the schools. They instead hired an in-house facilities manager for the district. You can get more on that story at TrumbullTimes.com. Well, the Bridgeport Police Department arrested a man for several motor vehicle infractions and criminal acts, including possession of a dangerous weapon and possession of narcotics, after police say he attempted to switch seats with the passenger in his car before he was stopped by police. On Monday, November 9th, police officers observed the operator of a vehicle failing to stop at the intersection of Benham Avenue and Coleman Street, followed by taking an abrupt turn onto Benham Avenue heading west. While traveling down Benham Avenue, the vehicle was swerving in and out of lanes and nearly struck six parked vehicles, police said. After pulling the vehicle over in front of 1438 Park Avenue building, the police officer noticed that the driver, identified as 36-year-old Hatim Joao Lane, was attempting to switch seats with his passenger. Following multiple failed attempts, Joaline climbed to the rear seats of the vehicle and pretended as though he was not the operator of the car. The police officer instructed Dwaline and the passenger to show their hands and called dispatch for backup. According to police, Dwaline's eyes displayed a glossy appearance and his breath, along with clothing, gave off a strong odor of alcohol. Dwaline refused to take a sobriety test and shouted at the police officer that he wasn't going to get out of the car. As the officer went to put handcuffs on Dwaline, he violently struggled to get free and after successfully doing so, began swinging his fists wildly. After an additional struggle, police officers were able to get him under control and cuffed him. A spring-assisted relief uh, release knife was found in Dwaline's front left pocket. He was in possession as well of a morphine pill. He faces several charges, including DUI and carrying a dangerous weapon. And in Stanford, a 12-year-old child waiting outside a Bedford Street shoe store around 6.30 in the morning Tuesday to buy a newly released sneaker was relieved of his $169 that he had in his pocket, allegedly by an 18-year-old. The Stanford Advocate reports that the preteen was waiting with a friend when they were approached by the older teen who identified himself as Rico and said he was a Stanford High School student. The three got to talking for a while before the older boy walked off, but he returned later to find the 12-year-old alone. The 18-year-old, whom police identified as Jahi McCollum of Norwalk, pushed the boy up against the wall, put his hands around his throat, and demanded his money. McCollum then reached into one of the boy's pockets and pulled out the cash and told the boy he would return to beat him up if he told anyone what happened. Officers investigating the robbery were able to identify McCollum and had Norwalk police arrest him. All right, going to switch gears and throw it over to Rob Adams now for today's weather. Rob? Kate, good morning and hi everyone. Let's get started by looking outside. Not the greatest day in the world. We've got a showery day, a lot of rain around, high near 55. South wind from 6 to 10 with gusts as high as 20. Chance precipitation, 100%. We'll get possibly a quarter of an inch of rain. Now tonight, chance of showers before 10. Cloudy gradually becoming partly cloudy, a low 47. With the wind staying pretty steady, 11 to 15 miles per hour. Chance precipitation down to just 30%. For Friday, mostly sunny, high 57. Breezy with a west wind from 16 to 22. But gusts as high as 34. To Friday night, mostly cloudy, low 35. The wind chill will be between 25 and 30, and the wind 15 to 17 miles per hour out of the west. To Saturday, sunny and 47 as we go to Darien with a northwest wind from 14 to 18 and gusts as high as 28 miles per hour. Don't look for us under the tent on Saturday. I have a feeling we'll be out in the sunshine. Saturday night, mostly clear, low 34. Sunny and 53 for Sunday. Sunny and 58 for Monday. We have 52 in New Canaan, 51 in Ridgefield, and right here in Shelton, we drop down to 50 degrees, Kate.
All right, Rob, thank you. Well, before we take a break, we just want to mention a special event coming up at Franco's Wine Merchants in New Canaan this Saturday, November 14th from 1 to 5. Franco's Wine Merchants, located at 130 Elm Street in New Canaan, will welcome Mr. Clement Kaleha, the Northeast brand ambassador for Champagne Bilicar Salmon, to their store as he pours three exceptional champagnes from the Bilicar Salmon portfolio. Among the champagnes that Clement will be pouring will be the Brut Reserve, a Brut Rosé, and the 1999 vintage of the Nicolas Francois Bilicar Salmon Champagne. Mr. Clement Kalea is a native of Alsace, France, where he first developed his passion for wines. He also holds a master's degree in management from Reims Management School with a major in wine and champagne marketing. That sounds like a fun major. He joined Bilicar Salmon as the brand ambassador in 2013 and currently lives in New York City and travels throughout the United States. So please make time this Saturday afternoon, 1 to 5, and visit Clement Kalea, Northeast brand ambassador for Champagne Bilicar Salmon, as he pours three exceptional champagnes and offers some interesting insights to these incredible wines. And if you need more information on that, go to francoswine.com. We're now going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have a look back on this day in history, the latest in high school sports, and a lot more news coming up on your coffee break after this. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. Football University, the nation's leading football training experience, is now accepting applications for its 2015 camps. Our elite faculty of NFL coaches and top professionals teach position-specific on the field and in the classroom to improve your football IQ and help you reach your full potential as a player. Apply today at footballuniversity.org. Football University, where technique plus talent beats talent alone. The fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait in the Long Island Sound. This is the time to visit the New England coast, and the dock shop can get you outfitted with the latest fishing gear, jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece. Boater, beach bum, fishermen simply love the New England coast. This is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Right. Have no fear. Hersam Acorn's Fast Frights movie contest is here. Visit fastfrights.com for more details. The only thing to fear is missing the deadline. <laughs> You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. 102,000 viewers have enjoyed the HAN Network in just the last six weeks. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. And we're back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Time to throw it over to Donald Ang for a look back on this day in history. Don. Well, Kate, reuse and recycle are popular terms today, but when NASA did it, it was nothing short of miraculous. But first we go to 1859. The first flying trapeze act performed by Frenchman Jules Léotard at the Cirque Napoleon in Paris. Uh, look closely, he is wearing a form-fitting bodysuit of his own design. It would later be named for him. 1933. Hugh Gray 
takes the first known photos alleged to be of the Loch Ness Monster. Some see a partially submerged uh, creature, some see a dog with a stick in his mouth. I think it's a UFO landing, but never mind. 1954, Ellis Island, the immigration station in New York Harbor, closes after processing more than 20 million immigrants since 1892. At its peak, 5,000 immigrants a day came through Ellis Island, and one-third of Americans can trace their ancestry back there. 1993, the first Ultimate Fighting Championship event, UFC 1, held at McNichol Arena in Denver, Colorado, intended to determine which style of martial art was supreme. It was won by Brazilian jiu-jitsu artist Hoist Gracie, who defeated boxer Art Jimerson, hybrid wrestler Ken Shamrock, and French Savat champion Gerard Gordeaux, all without landing a single punch. And finally, in 1981, there was this. We have main engine start. Minus three, two, one. We have ignition. We have ignition of the solid rocket boosters and tanks. Liftoff of the Paracase Space Shuttle, and the Space Shuttle has saved the power. Houston, now control for actually Space Shuttle Mission STS-2. Utilizing the Space Shuttle Columbia, that marked the first time in history a manned spacecraft launched into space twice. As you look back in history, and I am Don Ling. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, before we throw it over to Rob Adams for the latest in high school sports, getting back to a little news, statewide news today, a fire at a manufacturing company in Glastonbury continued to smolder this morning. Firefighters said more than 500,000 gallons of water has been used to fight the blaze at the preferred displays complex. That photo up right now, courtesy of WFSB. Firefighters remained on the scene more than 24 hours later. The blaze destroyed several of the business's buildings in the Roaring Broom, Broom Plaza. An investigation look into the cause. While they investigate that, 100 people are currently out of work. All right, going to throw it over to Rob Adams for the latest in sports. Rob. All right, thanks, Kate. Good morning, everyone. Mike Rodriguez has stepped down as head football coach at Bassock High School following the Lions' admission of using an ineligible player. The Lions forfeited their one win on this season, leaving Rodriguez's record as as 0-18 over not quite two seasons. Assistant Brandon Blank will coach the team for the balance of this season. Of course, the Lions in their first year in the CSC. From girls soccer, Class Double L second round. It was Glastonbury over Derry M 1-0. Greenwich knocked off Connard 3-1. New Canaan beat Middletown 1-0 as Ellie Aliopoulos had the lone goal. Katie Donovan was in net for, the, for her fourth shutout in six games. Wilton beat Newington 3-2 in double overtime. Some fun in that game, high drama, as Taylor Ingraham had the winning goal as time expired in the second OT. The Warriors will meet the New Canaan Rams in the quarterfinals on Friday. Ridgefield knocked off Ludlow 2-1. Katie Jasminski had the game winner. The Tigers next play Hall of West Hartford. They upset the third seed Fairfield Ward 2-1. From Class L girls soccer, it was St. Joseph knocking off Sacred Heart Academy 6-0. Bella Christian scored both goals as Christian Heritage beat Chase 2-0. CHS will host the league championship on Saturday. To field hockey, Class L first round, Darianna 5-0 winner over Newington. Staples knocked off South Windsor 3-0. Wilton won, New Milford nothing as Bridget Ward's goal led the Warriors. Greenwich beat Simsbury 3-1, Cheshire 2, Ridgefield nothing, and Norwalk got a goal from Sarah, Sarah Roddy with seven minutes to play. They beat Trumbull 3-2. On to Class M Volleyball, second round scores. Waterford over St. Joseph, 3-1. Scores of 21-25, 25-14, 25-23, and 25-15 for Waterford. They get the win. Class S, second round. Coventry over Trinity Catholic, 3-0. 25-17, 25-18, and 25-21 in that one. Gymnast Jennifer O'Neill of Trumbull has announced she will attend the University of Maryland, and congratulations to her. On to the schedule. Class Double L Boys Soccer, it's the second round, and 28th seed of Bridgeport Central plays number 12, Southington, at two. Hopefully not in the raindrops. Number 27, Connor, 
Stafford at number 11, Darianne. Number 15, Wilton goes and plays. Number 2, New Milford. Number 19, Greenwich is at number 3, Fairfield Prep. The 10 seed, Dar Danbury plays number 7, Farmington. From Class M, the field hockey quarterfinal. 7 seeded New Canaan is at number 2, East Lyme at 5 o'clock. From Class Double L Volleyball, Darianne and Staples play at 5 o'clock over at Darianne. It's number 6, Ridgefield hosting number 11, South Windsor. Number 15, Ward is at number 2, Amity. Number 10, Greenwich at number 7, McMahon. Number 4, Cheshire hosting 13th seeded Trumbull. And the number 25 seed, Norwich Free Academy, takes on number 9, Fairfield Ludlow. And just as a note, I mentioned on, the, on Nutmeg Sports yesterday, should Ludlow and Darianne both go on and win, you got yourself an FCAC championship rematch in the States with sports. I'm Rob Adams. Kate, back over to you. All right. Thanks, Rob. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Come back with a lot more news on your coffee break after this. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances, where community comes first, a place where there's more than one kind of interest, where automation will never replace consideration, where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. In Pound Ridge since 1993, the Wine Connection is one of America's best wine shops. Visit our beautiful store for the greatest in wine and knowledgeable service. With wonderful values from around the world to collectibles for your seller, we are your one-stop source. Visit our online shop at wineconn.com and make sure to sign up for email updates. With great offers, new arrivals, and special events, don't miss all the action at The Wine Connection, including tastings every weekend. The Wine Connection, located at 32 Westchester Avenue, Pound Ridge, New York. This fall, fall for our Red Panda. That's right, Roshan the Red Panda will be visiting the Beardsley Zoo for a limited time. Resembling raccoons, red pandas primarily eat bamboo, but will occasionally eat fruits, berries, young leaves, and certain tree bark, like their better known black and white cousins. As an adult, Roshan is expected to weigh 10 to 12 pounds, and you can see him at the South American Rainforest Exhibit, Connecticut's Beardsley Zoo of Bridgeport. A whole new experience, 875 Noble Avenue, Bridgeport, 203-394-6565. Back to school means back to busy, and Stewart's Market can save you precious time by stocking all of your favorite essentials under one roof. For a healthy start to school, we have all the ingredients. Walter Stewart's, your family-owned fresh local market, 229 Elm Street and at stewartsmarket.com. on your coffee break this Thursday, getting back to some more news. According to the Reading Pilot, jewelry and other items were taken from a Reading home on Long Ridge Road on Monday, November 9th. The items went missing between 1 and 4 in the afternoon. According to police, when the resident of the home returned from work, they found a door ajar and an amount of jewelry missing. They're currently compiling a full list of the property that was taken. Reading police did find DNA evidence at the scene, which they are investigating. Anyone in the Long Ridge Road area with information can contact Reading Police through their website, which is readingpolice-ct.us. Well, the New Canaan Board of Finance voted unanimously Tuesday night to approve the full Sachs Middle School expansion and renovation. That includes a two-story classroom addition on the northwest corner of the Sachs campus with about 12 additional classrooms, the renovation of the 58-year-old auditorium, right-sized music rooms, and added storage for the auditorium and music programs. That will come at a cost of $18.6 million. To maintain the schedule, the Board of Finance November 10th uh, and Town Council approved on November 19th construction documents to bid in January 2016. Uh, the auditorium renovation is expected to occur between June 2016 through February 2017. 
There's a lot more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. Well, the town of Ridgefield has never been considered a hotbed for hip-hop culture, but the Prospector Theater is helping to change that. Prospects Daniel Conisle and Mike Munchie Santini have been integrating the artistic elements of hip-hop culture into their job training programs at the Prospector, and their hard work has paid off. According to the Ridgefield Press, Daniel and Munchie will be presenting their findings alongside hip-hop artists, scholars, educators, and nonprofit workers during a Remixing the Art of Social Change annual hip-hop conference at the John F. Kennedy Center for Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. today, November 12th. Remixing the Art of Social Change, a hip-hop approach teach-in, is designed to outline the tools and resources necessary to develop curriculum, programs, and work based on hip-hop culture. The annual conference is hosted by the D.C.-based nonprofit Word Beats and Life, whose mission is to advocate for the transformative power of hip-hop culture in all its forms. However, there's a lot more on that story at theridgefieldpress.com. Our friends at The Prospector always doing a great job. Well, the HAN Network is working on a feature article about how to build a snowman for an upcoming holiday special section, and we're looking for your input. If you have any special snowman photos to share, or you can tell a tale about your favorite snow building experience, or you might have some tips to offer, you can email those photos and comments to editor at milfordmirror.com, and we may use your contribution in an upcoming article. And finally, in other HAN Network news, our Fast Frights competition is almost at a close, but voting is still open through today. You can visit FastFrights.com and help us choose a winner for our first short horror movie competition. The winner will be announced tomorrow, so definitely check out FastFrights.com. All right, going to throw it over to Rob Adams for one last look at today's weather, Rob. Showers in 55 today, Kate, south wind 6 to 10, new precipitation amounts between a tenth and a quarter of an inch. Winds will be gusting as high as 20 miles per hour. Chance of showers before 10 tonight, cloudy, gradually becoming partly cloudy, a low around 47, with the winds coming out of the west from 11 to 15. Mostly sunny, high 57 for Friday, breezy, a west wind 16 to 22, gusts as high as 34. Friday night, most Mostly cloudy, low 35, wind chill values between 25 and 30, west wind 15 to 17. To Saturday, we will be in Darien for a big matchup. The winner goes to the FCAC Football Championship as the Darien Blue Wave hosts the Staples Wreckers and Mark Ivanchek, a half sack away. And for those of you who don't know, yes, you can get a half sack in football as opposed to a whole sack. He's a half sack away from the state record for sacks. So we'll have that game on Saturday at 1. It's 1 o'clock now, not 1.30 here on the HAN Network. All that said, it's going to be 47, sunny, but the wind chill will make it feel a lot colder. Northwest wind, 14 to 18, gusts as high as 28. Take that into account. 34 and clear for Saturday night. Sunny, 53 Sunday, Monday, sunny, and 58. We have now around the region... New Canaan up to 53, Ridgefield at 52, and Shelton has improved to 51 degrees, Kate. All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, Josh Fisher is going to be joining me, and we're going to take a look at the front pages of our HAN Network community newspapers out today. That's coming up after this. Healthy, confident smiles begin at Stratford Orthodontics. Conveniently located on Main Street, we are Stratford's hometown orthodontist. We offer the latest in orthodontic technology, including Damon braces and Invisalign. We always accept new patients. Call today to schedule a complimentary consultation. 203-375-8332. Stratford Orthodontics, 2499 Main Street, Stratford. 203-375-8332. And online at StraffordSmile.com. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. And playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. While the temperatures are cooling down, the fall bite is heating up. 
Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait that are abundant in the Long Island Sound. If you love the New England coast during autumn, this is the time to be on the water. The latest from Shimano, Quantum, Avet, Hoagie, Phase 2, and more are in stock and ready to go at the dock shop. And don't mind those fall breezes with jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece from Grundens and Stormer. The dock shop will keep you warm and dry. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Do you do a lot of running around but get nowhere when you're buying a car? Visit Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram for the one-stop buying experience and stop spinning your wheels. And we're back on your coffee break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Josh Fisher joining me today, filling in for John Kovach, who's out on assignment today. We're taking a look at the front pages this yes, week. Yes, we are, Kate. What's jumping out to you, John? Well, uh, the lead story is a big story we've obviously been following in Weston for a while, that uh, the Navin's death was ruled a homicide. It's the couple that had been missing since this summer. Uh, their son and his girlfriend have been charged in the deaths, and they were discovered recently at an abandoned house in Weston. Uh, they also had the swearing-in ceremony there for the uh, new first selectman, uh, Nina Daniel, who won, uh, barely beating... Jeez, uh, her name just escaped me right now. Oh, uh, Gail, uh, Gail Weinstein. Gail Weinstein. <laughs> How quickly we forget. Uh, and so <clears throat> that's kind of exciting. First Republican to be the first selectman in Weston since uh, Weinstein was elected uh, six years ago, I mm. believe. And then this is kind of fun, too, on the bottom of the page. The Weston High School gym coach, or uh, swim, girl swim coach, jumped into the pool oh, that's with a great the players photo. Yeah, after they won the Southwest Conference Championship. So that was kind Rocco of fun. Rocco Veluzzo great photo. Pick, great pick by Rocco. Oh, I didn't know Rocco's middle name. Well, you didn't? No. Well, all right, I'm taking a look at the Stratford Star. A lot of big news in Stratford. Of course, as we mentioned earlier in Coffee Break, a person struck and killed by a train yesterday. Uh, as well as a, a very bizarre and unfortunate story, uh, the great centerpiece story is about the Vicky Soto 5K run. Well, during that run, a man from Brooklyn, New York, accosted family members. Uh, Soto family members mm -hmm. and said, you know, that uh, he was a conspiracy theorist and said that the Sandy Hook school shooting never happened. Uh, Vicki Soto was a teacher who died protecting uh, her students and, and helping them to hide during that shooting. And, you know, they get a great turnout every year for that 5K. Uh, I know she has a special place in everyone's hearts, yeah. especially in Stratford. But that man was arrested uh, and charged with breach of peace, and he tried to evade officers. So I think he also faced charges. These for whack that. jobs who think I know those of us here who who have been by the school after it happened, who who covered this story uh, now almost three years ago. I mean, there's you know not a proper place in hell for these whack jobs who come up here and try and tell all these people in Connecticut and the Newtown area that that tragedy didn't happen. Okay. We wish it didn't happen. Uh, and just one last thing on Stratford Star. Two police officers injured in crash. John Kovach took a f great photo. Uh, there wasn't any serious injuries, so that's great. Yeah. Uh, in Wilton, the this is something you rarely see uh, in our newspapers these days, but a school project stands $5 million under budget. The uh, And mm. as Jeanette Ross, the editor, writes, barring unforeseen circumstances, the Miller Driscoll renovation project could be brought in for as much as $5.3 million under budget. That's amazing. You all, Almost every single school project I've ever seen covered over the past decade and a half has come in above budget. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And then uh, Bill Brennan is leaving Town Hall, the longtime first selectman, uh, who served 10 years in office as uh, the head chief elected official in Wilton, uh, bids farewell to that town on Route 7. Well, in nearby Ridgefield, I'm taking a look at the Ridgefield Press. There is a new large American flag, 20 by 30 foot American flag that will hang in front of Town Hall. It was a gift to the town from its veterans, and that's a, a photo on the front page that Thomas Nash took of Legion Post Commander George Bessie standing with First Selectman Rudy Marconi during a ceremony on Tuesday. So nice new flag there. Some more serious news in Ridgefield, and we're seeing it actually in all our towns, a uh, rash of burglaries, and including one incident where the man had a knife, which is scary, uh, and police are investigating that now, all kind of in the Mamanasco Road area. 
Uh, also, an interesting story uh, the press has by Tony Spinelli about uh, the most common car in Ridgefield, which, you know, some people might think was a Mercedes or something like mm -hmm. that. But it actually, according to uh, property taxes, is Honda. So, interesting. It's very fun. You know, a lot of people drive Hondas. So it's yeah. rather popular. Right. And they're not so expensive to repair as much as German cars, which I know from experience of having a German car. So... Fancy. Mm. Uh, in Darien, there's a new head of the Board of Education as uh, the chairman, Betsy Haggerty Ross, has moved down to vice chairman and Michael Harmon had, was elected chairman of the board. It was a unanimous vote at the meeting uh, this week. So that's, you know, the Darien Board of Ed has had its ups and downs over the past few years. And um, <clears throat> so some changes there. Technically, at least. Uh, also, overdoses complicate uh, the picture of the heroin crisis is another story. We're seeing this all over the place as the heroin crisis really plagues not just our state, but, but the nation uh, with the increased use of opiates and, and other things. So uh, some in-depth reporting there. And uh, Darian's also, there's a fun story inside, too, about healthy hounds and how the Friends oh. of Animals, uh, which is a... Uh, Connecticut Bay or a Darien based uh, you know animal protection nonprofit uh, the founder has printed a dog doggy biscuit cookbook Kate so maybe you know you could cook up some dog biscuits this In weekend my spare or something time, yeah I'll do that I know you have a lot of it <laughs> well I'm taking a look at the Shelton Herald uh, interesting I guess mm -hmm. after heavy rains it collapsed the uh, historical history Shelton History Center's roof and so the community is coming together to help try and repair that. Aaron Berkowitz also wrote about some quarrels among the Board of Education, which of course is no course. surprise. Uh, two new members have been elected during this election season and one board member, Kathleen Yolish, uh, is looking forward to maybe setting aside differences and the board moving forward once those new elected officials start. And Aaron Berkowitz named his person of the week, who's Timothy Walsh, a long time uh, member of the Board of Education. So definitely check that out on the front page of this week's Shelton Herald. Uh, our friends across the border over in Lewisboro, uh, I know all the Connecticut reporters get used to doing their budget stuff in the springtime. It's done in the winter over in Westchester. And the town supervisor, who's like the first selectman or mayor over there in Lewisboro, has presented his 2016 budget to the town board. And <clears throat> there's a, there's a state-mandated tax cap 0.73% in New York, something I think uh, all of us in Connecticut would love to see. Uh, so, and of course also the town budgets in in towns like Lewisburg tend to be rather small too, just $11.2 million. So, and then the high school, John Jay High School, has new interim co-principals, as Jeff Morris reports in the ledger. Hmm. Well, I'm taking a look at the Trumbull Times. Uh, Steve Coulter has an interesting story about first selectman Tim Herps reacting to the election results. As we talked about yesterday, uh, last week on our election show, it was a rather close uh, competition between him and Vicky Tesoro, mm -hmm. which hadn't happened before. He had, uh, you know, won by, uh, you know, landslides in past elections. But, you know, he spoke to Steve and said he's going to make a commitment to find common ground with the opposing party. Also on the front page of the Times, uh, which I spoke about earlier on Coffee Break, was this lawsuit between AFB Construction and uh, the town of Trumbull getting settled. That was a really interesting story to cover about two years ago when all of that was coming out. It was a very nasty back and forth between the two. Uh, it was hard to keep up with it, honestly. Yeah. But, you know, Herps launched an investigation since AFB was the town facilities manager. They later did not renew that contract with AFB. Uh, Al Barbarata is a close friend with Governor Malloy, but he also felt that Tim was attacking him for that reason and it was politically motivated. So very interesting story. And then a story, uh, another interesting story, new plates and taste, same family feel. Marie's Sandwich Shop in Trumbull Center. This place has struggled. I mean, it's closed down a few times, come under new ownership. Uh, it's a breakfast and lunch stop. There's now new owners moving in. I think I wrote a story a couple years ago when that happened previously. <laughs> so we wish them the best of luck. I know everyone's always interested in, in restaurants surviving and thriving in Trumbull. Yeah, let's wish them definitely a lot of luck. Over in New Canaan, uh, this long talked about expansion to the middle school passed the finance board, a $18.6 million project, which was a <clears throat> big uh, item talked about during the election last week and some say helped uh, 
lead uh, to one, one councilman's defeat in the election. The selectmen are all also criticizing the audit committee, which um, has, the audit committee itself has criticized the town's finances for years. So lots of fun going on there in New Canaan politics for Greg Riley and staff to mm -hmm. keep up with, Kate. Oh, yeah. Well, looking at the Monroe Courier this week, uh, First Selectman Steve Vavrick is seeking consensus. He sent out a statement earlier this week saying that he's pledging monthly meetings with council Democrats. He's a Republican, and he really wants the town to move forward and for everyone to work together. Interesting. I mm -hmm. think it was an interesting statement that was sent out there. Uh, of course, we also have some coverage of the veterans being honored yesterday for their service on Veterans Day. And two arrested in a buck stop robbery that happened a few months ago. Oh, sorry, September 6th. Yes, so interesting Monroe Courier this week. <laughs> In Reading, they are, uh, the Reading front page is a celebration uh, this week. They're celebrating two champion teams at Joe Barlow High School, which is uh, shared with Easton. The field hockey team and the volleyball team both won the Southwest Conference Championships. Uh, there's a new Silverman artist, uh, uh, Silvermine artist, rather. Dan Makarka is a, a Ready Knight and now uh, is part of uh, the Silvermine uh, Arts Center over in, in New Canaan. Shrek's coming, uh, <laughs> Shrek the Musical is coming to Barlow this month that uh, <laughs> Newman directs the American Museum of, of Tort Law. Didn't even oh. know there was an American Museum of Tort Law. I didn't either. Wow, it's that sounds that like lawsuit a lawsuit between Tim and Al Barbarata yeah. was about tort law. I think maybe it'll be one day enshrined <laughs> in the Museum of Tort Law. You know, it's one of the. I wonder how much it costs to go there and if you could sue to get in. Uh, well, all right, thanks, Josh. Mm -hmm. Taking a quick look at the Milford Mirror. Uh, we also talked about this on Coffee Break this week. There is supposedly some kind of FBI probe happening in Milford. Uh, interesting. It's it's looking into how monies, grant monies, and such possibly related to uh, Hurricane Sandy were spent in the town and how those were awarded. So interesting there. Also new business coming to Milford, Trampoline Park. That's always very popular. Fun. And in another Sandy-related story, uh, Jill Dion spoke to one resident who's finally back in her home after three years. So, I mean, parts of Milford were just absolutely devastated by Sandy, and I remember the Milford Mirror did a great job of coverage and photos following that. So, very interesting Milford Mirror this week. And Josh, finally. Finally, arts and leisure. You know, in, in all of our papers, this is a great, it's the B section of, of all of our papers. And Sally Sanders, the editor, does a great job of covering things that are going on all over our region. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a weekend of art in Ridgefield. Four artful markets launch uh, Ridgefield's holiday season. Uh, this thing was is about about squash and nourishing November. The conscious cook, uh, always a fun read yes. in there. And, and and the real dad, Mark Schumann, who is on our H and Arts and Leisure show, which is actually coming up today at two. Last week they spoke about some journalism movies, uh, and this week. Mark Schumann writes about Kate Blanchett in the journalism film Truth. Mm. Uh, Mark Schumann won't be joining them today for HN Arts and Leisure, but they have some other special guests lined up, Sally and Steve. So it's going to be a great show. That's cool. coming up at 2 after the Yankee Fisherman at 1, Josh. All right. But that's going to do Let's it. cast off. We're going to cast off. All right, everyone have a great day, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow at 11.